Okay, here we have the new Raspberry Pi Model B first release. It's May 2012. This is uh, pretty new here in the UK. It's hard to get hold of at the moment. And uh, a good friend's going to uh, demo some of the features and we're going to talk about a few of the things that he's encountered with his new Raspberry Pi that's only a week old. So this is it booting up. There's a logo top left there of the very familiar Raspberry Pi shape that we are getting to all know and love. It's booting off an SD card uh, and has to boot off an SD card to get going. You can then do other options where you can have things on USB sticks or external hard drives, but that's not for this video. Um, on this SD card, um, we've got um, the Linux distro of, a, of Debian Squeeze, which, which at the moment it's loaded and having logged on as root it's now started up and as you can see we've now got a very basic Linux texty uh, desktop so some standard Linux type commands ls there's a df minus h listing there etc um, etc et we're going to quickly go into um, a GUI so we're going to run start x now uh, which is the x11 GUI it takes a little while to load. Um, it's not the fastest thing in the world, this Raspberry Pi. Um, it's still early days, so I'm not complaining about the speed. You've got to get used to um, what a £25 or $30 computer is capable of doing. So what we've now got loaded is um, lightweight X11 desktop environment. So that's a very simple plain screen. And we're going to go through some of the options and etc. programs that you get uh, with this distro. So if we just click on uh, the menus and we're gonna quickly go through a few. So you've got some uh, preferences. We're not gonna do anything particularly fancy there. Some system tool options. We're not gonna go anything fancy there. You get a media, a music player, a me media player of sorts. Programming, there's already quite a few applications uh, available for you. I'm only gonna mention one regarding the Python editor because that's what the Raju Pi Org says they're gonna primarily support regarding school, home development, homebrew development, etc. We'll there's quite a few things another. Um, we're going to just show you the clock and just talk to, talk to you a little bit about the fact that it hasn't got an onboard clock. So this is already connected up to the internet. And so it's getting its date and time correctly from the internet. But a few people have joked that it hasn't even got a clock. Well, it's not that it can't uh, refresh memory cycles, etc. But yeah, it absolutely doesn't keep uh, anything on board unnecessary. As you can see, that's a, that's a classic example of how bare bones and stripped back this, this unit has been. It's a very purist device they've not wasted even a cent or a penny on anything it doesn't need okay so there is an internet browser inbuilt with this distro midori um it's quite basic we're going to load um, a page that we've uh, already dabbled with just to demonstrate um a how long it takes to load so we are literally now waiting for it to load this is actually loading um a youtube uh video one of my own that i've already got uh, where i've demoed the rosy play paying playing Quake 3 at the Gadget Show when I first saw it in the UK a few weeks back. And what you'll quickly see is um, a message, uh, that red flash uh, banner, where it can't actually handle uh, flash nor HTML5. So the current installed browser by default isn't able to handle some of the advanced features of the internet. This is not a device at the moment built for browsing the internet. That was just a quick demo, but absolutely can do images, text, navigate, all the normal stuff you'd expect and the more basic features of, of browsers. So we're now gonna go back to, oh, okay, hold on. We're now gonna show you the BBC website. And I think that's because it has embedded within it. It doesn't use flash, it uses something different. So hold on, bbc.co.uk, looks okay. So, okay, not sure what my uh, what friend was gonna show you there. Anyway, so we're gonna go back to um, the list of applications and we're gonna go up to education. And on here, we're gonna quickly load Scratch. Now Scratch is um, a nice little tool they've given you. It's a um, quick, easy uh, logo type program. You've got a little fancy cat by default as your main first sprite. On the left, you've got a series of commands that you can just drag and click and change the various parameters. And um, there's a few ways of doing this. You can either run them individually and click it and the cat will do those things. Or as you can see, we're building up a quick little pile of um, options which have been locked together. There's a nice kind of key shape icon uh, to the blue steps. So we've got move 10 steps forward, turn 20, 15 degrees right, move 10 steps forward, turn 15 degrees to the right. And we're now gonna click that and watch the cat top right 
and as you can see it's just carried that out so click it again carries it out so you can see the actual sprite of the cat animating on the right hand side so it's very much kind of pen up pen down forward 15 degrees 90 degree turns etc and uh, that's a great little application to get uh, education uh, awareness into kids regarding controls the Raspberry Pi has got an, a, a great deal of connectors on the motherboard for uh, eventual connection to devices where you will be able to literally control and drive little robots. Uh, this is early days, but I uh, well believe this is going to go down the very same route that the BBC Micro did in the 80s, where we were all with lots of uh, long cables connecting BBC Micro Bs to little logo printer plotters that were on the floor uh, with pens up, pens down drawing little things on uh, a, a zero sheet paper on the floor in our, in our school classrooms and this very much harks back to that. Okay, so we're now going to uh, go and talk about a couple of techy things where the SD card that's uh, currently running, this is currently running from, this distro is running from a 16 gig image card and my friends uh, cracked one of the first of many technical challenges that you're going to find with this. So a lot of people are having problems uh, where SD cards, some of them don't work, some people find that they can't utilize the full space on an SD card. So many people will find that the original one gig uh, image, they can't grow their, uh, the, they can't grow the image to utilize the full 16 gig in this example available on the actual SD card. Uh, and with mucking about with F disks and various other commands that the support forms, FAQ forms have uh, demonstrated, um, he's managed to grow the Debian to use all of the 16 gig SD card and as you can see they're highlighted there's 15 gig free, oh that's root FS so that's the, it's, it, there's a 15 gig formatted uh, use 1.5 gig with what we've just seen there and just as a comment that took two and a half hours to do that grow from the 1 gig to 16 gig so as I say there's a few comments regarding the speed and performance um, it's a 10 speed rated SD card so it's not a not a, a slow card by any means but certainly the fastest memory you can get in this thing is going to help. Um, there's a This is a good indication uh, to show you the kind of technical jazz you are going to get. This is very early days, this is the beta. This is not for consumers at the moment. Um, I'm personally waiting for something like Brandy Basic which would be like a BBC Basic so I can just get on there and program in a basic like program language. Uh, I personally am not uh, uh, overly technical with these kind of things. This is fun, this is challenging but it's uh, very early days and uh, for, for myself, uh, I'm, I, I'm waiting for the next level of support. Um, I know some people are looking for Ubuntu type releases or Android type releases operating systems to make this uh, much more of a consumer product, but at the end of the day, this is, this is already uh, looking, looking great for universities, homebrew, bedroom development, programming, the, the kind of things that uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm in my 40s and uh, the kind of things I did as a, as a young lad uh, on VIC 20s, Commodore 64s, BBC Micro Bs, etc. This this really does hark back to that, and hopefully, a whole new generation will have the same kind of fun experience and challenges, and a bit of home development on a very cheap unit that is easily affordable and at the end of the day plugs into the television in your bedroom. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, I'll do a few more of these videos uh, in the coming weeks.